Assalamualaikum viewers this is Jana Sarwar and you are watching Sarwar's Chronicle in fact i plan to have a session on written exam and soon realized uh, that i'm not up to date with the hsc syllabus so i'll skip that i believe there is enough material out there for the preparation of your written exam in a state i'll talk to you on psychology test conducted by the inter service selection board where many candidates seem to struggle the realm of psychology test especially those conducted by the issb is shrouded in mystery whether one qualifies or not the exact reasons for success or failure remains elusive interestingly the issb maintains a tight lip policy never disclosing the feedback to the candidates curious to know why stay tuned i am about to shed light on this enigma i'm going to share some insights on this complex issue which you should be able to relate to yourselves i'll speak from the heart even if you ask me about my selection process all i can recall some frail memories of my issb days and nothing beyond for details you need to explore my dossiers maintained by the issb known only to those psychologists and a handful of military officers trained on the subject the psychological part of the issb poses a real challenge known only to those well versed in the subject however understanding the essence of psychology and the purpose behind this test demystifies the process so why waiting let's dive into this relatively unstudied subject i often emphasize upon the fundamental distinction between a soldier's role and other professions whether you're sitting for bcs medical engineering pharmacy banking taxation or even the police entrance examination no higher will you find psychological test wondering why in essence these roles are very different than those a soldier is often asked to perform military personnel possess a unique set of qualities and is perfectly okay if you don't align precisely with them these divergences in roles doesn't any way reduce your worth as a human being consider the case of former indian president let apj kalam an aeronautical engineer who failed to join in the indian air force clint eastwood attempted to enlist in the us army during the korean war but was rejected due to his fitness issue he later on found success becoming a celebrated actor and a director sometimes the almighty has different plans for each one of us soldiers consciously make that choice for which he is ready to die there are countless instances showcasing military's exceptional dedication allow me to share a touching anecdote from our independence war featuring flight lieutenant mati rahman known for hijacking a military aircraft from west pakistan to join in our independence war in a tragic turn of events a lockheed t33 aircraft piloted by young punjabi pilot officer rashid minhaj and accompanied by flight lieutenant mati rahman as trainer crash near indopak border minhaj sensed mathew's intention leading to a hand to hand fight inside the cockpit mathew like any other day probably hugged his wife and beautiful little daughters not knowing that it would be his last ride literally shivers will run down your spine as you will hear all those stories only soldiers can weep such narratives with blood and enduring sagacity not everyone becomes a hero in war but those who do they inspire thousands demonstrating how armies fight and win wars but it was world war 1 that fundamentally transformed the nature of warfare we saw mindless use of new technologies including tanks guns aircraft submarines machine guns causing enormous deaths and casualties the most alarming phenomena was the increasing number of psychiatric cases the number of shell shock cases in particular rose as high as 40% during the battle of somme in france such large scale casualties could not be afforded in the military nor they could be retained for their long term financial implications during world war 1 it was united states army that for the first time started taking psychological tests for military enrollment by the end of world war 2 many armies adopted this and so did british indian army thus we inherited this system but what is psychology 
just know that is the study of human behavior and mind behavior simple the way we act or conduct ourselves with others but what is mind we all know what our heart is right but do you know who your mind is no worry nobody has found it out as yet few would say that the mind is in their heart some would say the mind is in their brain some enthusiast would even say that their minds are under somebody else's control such mindless people living jokes apart there is no definite answer to this query as yet just know that the mind is associated with the brain and often used interchangeably brain is composed of neurons or the nerve cells which are physical things mind is invisible yet controls our thoughts feelings and desires all these functions are undertaken by the neurons we all have nearly 100 billion neurons in our body to do all these functions whenever we feel cold the sensory neurons carry the signal from around the body to the brain motor neuron in the brain carry the signal back to the body consequently blood vessels shrink slowing down the flow of blood to the surface for maintaining warmth according to psychologist sigmund freud mind operates in three different levels firstly the conscious mind where we see do experience things all happening at the conscious level for instance when you feel thirsty it prompts us to drink water and falling sick leads us to visit a doctor these are the outcome of conscious mind then we have subconscious mind which is habitual in character routine actions like navigating in the dark to reach the bed after turning off the lights at night becomes habit likewise brushing our teeth driving through the familiar route tying shoelaces then using mobile phone or nail biting and other familiar activities we all do as a matter of habit the subconscious mind aims to conserve mental energy allowing us to do these jobs without much thought finally the unconscious mind it impacts our life far more intensely and why not every day 60000 thoughts come to our mind at 2500 thoughts per hour unbelievable facts of all these 80% are negative and 90% 95% thoughts are repetitive you heard the famous song pagol mon mon re mon keno eto kotha bole essentially referring to the to all those thoughts good or worse stored in our unconscious mind these are stored separately from our conscious mind either for the fear of failure rejection shame guilt or maybe for failing to synchronize with the with our world view if you are a 20 year old you have already stored more than 100 times the content of the entire encyclopedia britannica this massive mental database sits quietly just waiting for the perfect moment or the right situation or a trigger or a little nudge to wake up when it does it has the power to shape the way we act or behave defining who we are let me share some examples so that you will understand it easily just try and recall your school days when your friends try to share their thoughts instead of getting support they were unfairly bullied or criticized by the teachers or others this sort of behavior is undesirable in the learning environment these experiences hold them back every time they want to speak up some people have negative attitudes reflecting through their rude behavior pointless argument arrogance or by being alone you probably heard people saying rege galen to here galen again referring to the same kind of people we all encounter such people in our life be it in the family schools colleges or in the workplaces trust me nobody is doing it deliberately as we often think it to be such behaviors stem from their unconscious programming something we usually overlook and don't pay much attention to to elaborate further people who are raised in broken families experience traumas then abusive relations child abuse accidents emotional neglect for all this one may find it hard to socialize or trusting others besides the genetic factors cognitive processes neuroplasticity habitual behavior socio and cultural influences can also have impact on unconscious programming on the flip side if you have or if your mind is filled with positive thoughts and happy memories it can make you feel confident and open up opportunities for growth 
understanding what's going on deep inside your mind can help you move forward with your plans or overcome beliefs that are holding you back without you realizing it our minds are full of thoughts but the strengths and the barriers whatever we call them they come from our beliefs our beliefs are strong convictions that stand out differently from flitting thoughts many of our beliefs they start forming when we were we were little kids influenced by our parents teachers siblings or even important adults in our life once formed these beliefs stick around silently guiding us like a hidden compass as we step into adulthood having positive beliefs can motivate people if someone believes in hard work he is motivated to do great things in life believing in the power of hard work enables one to navigate through the challenges easily maintain focus on goals and facilitate success conversely someone who strongly believes that they cannot learn new things just because they struggled in the past such negative thoughts can become a roadblock in reality they might be capable of learning even better proofs are all those who are victorious they have managed to overcome all these odds in their past understanding the difference between thoughts and belief is therefore so very important when your thoughts and beliefs become a bit scrambled head to head face to face and you are confused indecisive it's okay to have such experiences conflict between your thoughts and beliefs can be beneficial facilitating personal development whenever in confusion you may always look for support it's quite normal thing seeking support from someone who knows their stuff is like looking for direction when you are lost it helps you in finding your way back we all do it so do it without any hesitation if you now relate this understanding with your ISSB test it will be easier for you to count be helped just imagine i provide you with a picture a single word or an unfinished sentence asking you to craft a story or construct a sentence or complete the incomplete sentence how do you proceed if you are new to this probably you would generate whatever comes up readily in your head right but if you were allowed little more time you would bargain with your conscious as to what would be or could be the perfect response under pressure you don't have that chance and your reactions come naturally that's what the psychologists are looking for this is called projective psychology test used by ISSB as i said before they provide you with ambiguous stimulus such as blurred picture incomplete sentence sentence making story writing group discussion viva voce exam and most of which are time constrained the time limit is deliberately set to prompt original responses because without original responses the facets of individual's personality reflecting his emotions behavior patterns cannot be identified there is a science behind using a story we all love to hear stories we want to tell stories and transform almost everything we experience in a story form it's not our fault right back in the days our ancestors they drew pictures on the cave wall to share their experiences now what do we do we take selfies and post them on the facebook wall the same idea right so storytelling is deeply woven in the cultural and social fabric stories bring out the hidden emotions what is conflicts that someone might not divulge when asked to how someone tells his stories builds a character or makes a narrative shows creativity problem solving skill communication skill and his thought process themes of resilience problem solving and avoidance in a story can provide insight to one psychological coping strategies freudian psychoanalysis suggests that symbolic elements used in a story can reveal hidden desires and fear from unconscious mind so this should help you in understanding this complex issue it must be boggling in your mind as to how will you understand one psychological state indeed is a genuine question for that one must have minimum intelligence to understand if you are introvert negative arrogant or you have difficulties in trusting others maybe that's why i should be takes your iq iq test before all other tests Now that you know your state depending on your need you may seek guidance or an elaborate session under some experts i would rather underscore the significance of introspection identifying issues and personally taking care of those i can assure you 
this is the way to go. You may still look for X part for needful. Fact remains, in regards to the psychological issues, there is no quick fix or one size fits all solution as every one of us is so very different than the other. Common query, is it possible to qualify in the psychology tests in the second time? Absolutely. Success relies on candidates determination, the level of support available and the time invested in the entire process. Failing in the psychological test is not a perpetual state of affairs, is it? If it were, the armed forces would not provide individual with the second chance. Indian and Pakistani armed forces provide candidates with plenty of chances. I would assert that repeaters, they often excel in their career because they already know how to alter the outcomes. With this, I have come to the end. Hope you enjoyed this discussion. Now, I'll tell you why ISSB doesn't share feedback. They don't share feedback to prevent manipulation and for maintaining test reliability. Detailed feedback could introduce subjectivity and interpretation challenge in a large pool of candidates raising both ethical and legal concerns. I think these are good enough reasons for you to understand why ISSB doesn't share feedback. So you don't expect it either. Best of luck, goodbye and Allah Hafiz.